<laughs> nah, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Welcome, yeah, we, welcome to episode, what are we, on 15? Something like that. 15 of the Off Work Podcast. So, how was, how was y'all's weekend, man? My weekend was lovely, bro. You know, I just chilled, relaxed, and black lives still matter, so that's it. All right, all right, all right. He, he owns political shit early. I ain't mad at him. Black lives <laughs> always matter, right? Exactly. What about you, Drew? <laughs> Shit, I just chill, get ready for this trip, back back to VA, you know. Back home, baby. Oh, yeah. Trip back home, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut your asses up. <laughs> Why you mad, bro? I want to go. I want to go back home too, dog. I want to. No, go back home, bro. no, you can. What's we'll stopping oh, it? Yeah. You acting like the dude yes that dude last week about last week. Why you got a mask for? What do you mean? What's stopping me? COVID stopping me, dog. No, you can wear a mask on a plane. What are you uh, saying? Uh, Everybody has to wear a mask. It's not an option. You have to wear a mask on a plane. Okay, so you trust everyone to keep their mask on the entire flight? You trust they them? have to. They have to. It's okay. federal regulation. Okay, I, I, we, we have to do a lot of shit. When, you, when you're driving on the highway, you have to drive 65 miles per hour. That's the speed. Okay. Do you do it? Uh, all right. You do it? All right, you got it. You got it. You're right. You're damn right. Like, dog, you can't tell me they're, modern, they're monitoring everyone on the flight. Like when everyone's going to sleep, there might be that one person that might like sneak their nose up and kind of like get a little breathe breather in. Then everyone on the plane got it, dog. They're you know there's people that work on the plane, plane, right? Huh? <laughs> you know the <laughs> students. There's, there's flight attendants on the plane. You know that, right? They can't see everyone. They can't. They walk up and down the aisles. What do you mean? The entire flight? No, they don't. Unless there's something new that they changed. They don't. The last time I was on a flight, they don't. They do it in the beginning. Bro, they're all. <laughs> Well, Drew will inform us when he when he flies on the way out here. He'll yeah, I, I'll let you know how it was. He'll let you know. Drew, I see you. Drew got the haircut, dog. Dude, ready to get back, dog. That's Pierre, dog. That's Pierre, dog. Got the slick joints. Are, are you half Italian or something? <laughs> Your hair is way too slick, dog. It's way too slick, bro. How is it too slick? Hey, no cap. He looks like Elder Bars. No cap. How is it too slick? Like Elder Bars, dog. Way too. I mean, I'm hating, dog. I need a haircut. But, yeah. Uh, Yo, my, my weekend take, was take care of my hair. My weekend was love, bro. <laughs> it was love. What'd it was you do? love, bro. My my What'd girl do, came. Bro? She met my sister for the first time. My my big sister, Brittany. So we was over there chilling. You know what I'm saying? Like she had a dinner with, with the parents and my other sister, oh, yeah. dog. So it was love, bro. It was it was love. Everyone loved their dog. Everyone loved oh, yeah. their dog. That's tough. That's what you need. Yeah. That's what you so, need, dog. That, that's that's definitely uh, um Necessary. I'm about, to, I'm about to be on that this week, dog, with my girl. She meet the like, meet the fam. Oh, uh, so she's no, that's a lot, dog. You putting a lot on her plate, dog. Is she meeting like all your friends back home too? Oh yeah. Dang. He, he, he get he get that interview process out the way early. Dang. Get out of the way early. But I guess I mean I guess the the it's been flipped because you already met like um her her people, so hey, I mean it's, it's only right. Yeah. So, so before before we really get into the um. To the episode, I want to say rest in peace to Naya Rivera. Um, I know she went missing during our last recording, and we didn't really get to touch on it. So they found her fun, her son alive on the boat. However, they found her, and she's no longer with us. So I just want to send like a, a quick rest in peace to her and her sure. family through this this difficult time. I think she, um, I don't know, I haven't read the, the exact reports, but I, I think that she saved her son's life. Yeah, so, that's what the report. Yeah, the report said. Man, that's that's crazy. Like this to to be a parent, I can't even imagine being in a position. So she she's a real hero though, man, to you know to save her son's life and she ended up losing her life. That's that's something that I know us as parents we're doing a heartbeat. But yeah. to see someone in that actual position is is kinda like chilling. So rest in peace. Yeah, straight up. Y'all wanna y'all let, let's let's get into it, dog. We have a lot of stuff we got to break down, dog, for this so, week. A lot happened last week, bro. A lot. A lot. A lot. So, we're we going to start off with Jarrell's man, Yeezy. Yeezy. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why does it have to be my man? That's your man, dog. <laughs> what? That is your man. That is your man. Okay, that's my man. Okay, all right. Go ahead. Yeah, so. Niggas will just say anything for clout. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know where to start with, with Kanye. At first, they said – um. At first, last week, he was talking about, you know, becoming um, president, 
Now he wanted Trump to be his vice president. And then he did a, a campaign. Wait a minute, dog. How you want the current president to be your <laughs> He said it, dog. Did y'all hear it? What? Yeah. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that part, bro. Yeah. So he, he said that. I don't know. So. <laughs> Kanye. But this is my man. But this is my man. But go ahead. And then, well, let, let, let's, let's rewind. So last week, like directly after we, we finished the pod, he made a statement saying that Harriet Tugman um, freed the slaves only for them to work for whites. And at, look, I want I want to cut Kanye um, some bail on this because it does the statement itself seems nuts, but when you like do like a deep dive, like who holds the power in in the United States? White people. I think I think the problem with Kanye is that he never knows. He has a thought, but he doesn't know how to get that thought out. He never yeah. says it the right way. Yeah. And then y'all that's the problem. Y'all are annoying the shit out of me right now, dog. No, that's the problem with Ka- – no, bro, just listen. To, and then I'm going to throw him some bail. I don't know if this is the facts, but to me, what he was trying to say is that basically, yes, she freed the slaves, but they weren't really free. Like – yeah. They were still being oppressed. They still weren't living good lives. So, like, yes, she freed them, but slavery technically really wasn't over. Like, well, that's what... No shit, Sherlock. I but mean, Kanye, Kanye's acting like he's giving us a fucking history lesson that we already knew. Yeah, <laughs> no, but, but I'm saying, like, he's, he's basically... Kind of like when he came out with... Um, slavery was a choice. Slavery was a choice. Yeah. So, yeah, it's ignorant statements, but he's basically saying that like, white people had generational wealth. Black people don't. So a lot of black people are, are work for companies that are owned by white. Y'all are shooting Kanye too much bail, dog. Y'all, y'all, y'all need to hold Kanye accountable and hold his feet to the fire, dog. So what, what, cannot, what, what do you think he meant by that? Cannot, y'all cannot put words in Kanye's mouth to try to make him more credible to the black community because he has fucking lost it, okay? Whenever yeah. Kanye has a platform, a large platform, and he says that Harriet Tubman freed the slaves and, you know, basically makes it to minute as to when they went to go work for white people. Well, no fucking shit, Sherlock. They didn't have their own shit at that point. We still don't, black, though. That's black people point. didn't have... The, black people, there were very few, probably a handful of black people who had, who were entrepreneurs at that time and had their own businesses. So Kanye's not telling us anything that we already don't know. The fact that he's trying to minimize, minimize Harriet Tubman's effort in breaking down slavery and freeing those slaves is the problem. That's the issue at hand. For me, it is, anyway. So basically saying he's trying to disregard what Harriet Tubman did. Exactly. Okay. For sure. Maybe we are cutting too much bell, but I just saw what he was trying to articulate, and maybe that maybe that's my fault, because he needs to be more concise than what he's saying. But I honestly feel like he's saying that black people, we don't have any ownership and shit, and we, we still work for whites. That's what I took from it, but... Now, I will say that, that that's true. I mean, obviously, we see Kanye is somebody that's heavily into fashion, right? <clears throat> and he's always gone to interviews and talked about how he wanted to create his own fashion line, but he could never get the funding from higher-end fashion industry people to back his stuff. And then now that he has that platform, especially because I think he just signed a, a deal with Gap, correct, Drew? Yeah, he ten, just signed a 10-year ten ten year deal with Gap. Right. So now that he signed a 10 year deal with Gap, now he feels like he can just go off and say all these things. Well, Kanye, you forgot you were the person in that same position just a few years ago. So don't fucking do that. Like, don't try to minimize somebody's efforts just because of the fact that now that you made it, don't do that. Okay. That, that, that's fair. That's fair. In all, in all seriousness, though, like, he really needs like professional help. Like, we all know he deals with mental health issues, but like, Recently, and then I know Jarvis, you're about to get to like the whole Twitter rant, but like he's clearly not taking meds. Like he's clearly off of them. See, that, that's that's the thing. Before his Twitter rant yesterday, last night, I saw the the video of him crying when talking about abortion, and it kind of like bothered me that everyone shot straight to his mental health. I'm like, we talked about last week, black men being able to sh- share their emotions. So I thought he just had like an emotional um breakdown. Yeah, not like a meltdown, but like yeah, emotional breakdown to where he was thinking about his daughter not being there and that that 
put a uh, emotion in him where he started to cry. I didn't see anything wrong with that. And I was actually kind of perturbed that people would go straight to like, oh, it's a black man crying, so he must he must has meant he must be off his medication. But last night, like that Twitter rant, I don't look. I I, was, I think Kanye has you know, a, a mental health issue. But I think a lot of this is, has to do with his album coming out, bro. It's, it's his rollout. It's his rollout. Because yeah, but- after, after that series of tweets that he, that he let off, he put, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm focused on music now. And he put, a, he put a, the, the Donda track list out. And I'm like, that's a rollout, bro. But just like you guys said, how many times are we going to keep shooting these artists' bill? Every time something, you know, strange happens, we keep saying, oh, that's because their album's about to come out. Or that's marketing for the album. Like, I don't necessarily think that was the case with Kanye. I think that Kanye, he really has some mental issues and he needs some help. I mean, he ha- it's well documented that ever since Kanye's mom had passed, he's been having some mental health issues. Obviously, I think from a standpoint of just, this is just my perspective of me looking on the outside in, is that it looks like whenever she passed away, like, his basically his whole world basically got turned upside down and he didn't know how to deal with those issues. And just like we talked about last week on the podcast, a lot of these black men, they avoid therapy because of the fact that they don't want to deal with certain things, certain things. And I feel like Kanye, if the, if the correct people are in his corner, they should have sat down with him, you know, got him the necessary help that he needed. And then, you know, we would probably see a different version of him. If not, you know, maybe a more positive version of Kanye. Maybe he wouldn't be going and saying all these, you know, crazy things. But I just think that it's sad to kind of see, you know, Kanye, his rise, and then now we're kind of seeing his fall, especially because I consider Kanye a musical genius, just on the musical aspect alone. You know, obviously, we we know all the great work of the albums and everything, the music that he produces. But now he's getting into politics and he's getting into, like I said, these history, these history lessons and, you know, and my opinion, my opinion, putting out misinformation to um, young black Americans and especially people that look up to him, because some people only know Kanye as, you know, a, somebody uh, as a figure in the hip hop culture. So obviously he, that he holds a lot of weight, you know what I'm saying, and especially to the young kids. So for him to put out that misinformation is very, is very scary. I mean, you know, like I said, these young kids, they don't know any better. They don't know how to decipher. They don't know what's bullshit and what's not. We're 31 years old. We're able to decipher that shit. They're not. I don't think the young kids give a fuck about Kanye, to be honest with you. I, I highly doubt that. Maybe because maybe, maybe he's lying. I know some 20 and 21-year-olds who fucking love Kanye. Damn. They love Kanye. I, I just think what, what you're saying, you, you said that the people in his corner. I don't think he has the right people in his corner right now. I, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't think he has the right people in his corner, like, for the longest. And that goes back to the Kardashians. Like, the Kardashians, look. Yeah, and going off of that, like, a lot of that stuff he was saying was, like, crazy, you know, during the Twitter rant. But let's say, what if it, what if he was telling the truth? Like, what if Cam and them really tried to get him locked up? Like, what if they really tried to do all that? The thing is, like, it's probably, it probably is the truth. They probably did try to get him lock up, locked up because he does have a psychiatric issue. They talked to doctors to get him locked up. I believe that shit wholeheartedly. So if, so if that's his wife and his mother-in-law trying to do this stuff, like, like you said, who's in this, who's really in this corner? Like, who yeah. can he really go to for help? I mean, for, for having to, for, for me being in a position to where I had somebody in my family who had mental health issues, you can only do but so much. So calling somebody like a counselor or a therapist to try to, get, to try to get the person, you know, some help is about as much as you can do. Once that person turns 18, it's super difficult to get mental health things done for for a patient because of the fact that they have to be able to articulate and t- and say themselves that they want to be put in this program. So if Kanye is not harming himself or in, the, in danger of harming others, then they won't do anything for him. Listen, man, I, I just think, because he said Get Out was about him. Look, when my cousin first hit me up, my cousin was like, yo, Kanye on Twitter wilding. So I was like, shit, I'm I'm going to get some entertainment. Because, you know, Kanye goes on his rants. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to get my popcorn out. I'm ready to get my laugh on. And I read, I'm like, man, this is sad, bro. Like, this this is truly sad, what was yeah. taking place. So I couldn't even laugh. And, um, yeah, man, I, 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 I do think it's, for, it's partially due to an album rollout. 
But I do think that he's facing some some issues at home, especially with because he never ever really like went at his mother in law and his wife like that on, on his rants. Never. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the stuff he said was just like alarming to me. And I can see how I can get to that point to where I listen, man, a lot of the, the guys that deal with the Jenners and Kardashians, we see what has transpired with them. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah. Dabba. <laughs> Just to close out this topic, like, us as black men, dog, we need to check on our friends, dog. That's that's one thing that I got out of this. Like, check up on, like, your your friends. Like, maybe if you haven't talked to somebody in a while, like, don't just go off of what you may see on, like, social media. We've talked about this before. Like, that's all up front. Like, check up on your friends, like, on some real shit. Like, just to see how they're doing. Like, you never know what somebody might be going through. Yeah. And like maybe Kanye don't doesn't have anybody like that. Maybe he doesn't have any friends to like, you know, check up on and be like, "Yo, you good?" Like, "What's up?" Like, so that that's just to close out that topic. Yeah, definitely, definitely for sure. You got you got check up, especially when they say a strong friend, because those are the people that provide the most support to everyone else. So you had that friend that you know used to like helping you out, but you got to check up on them because you never know. Um. So I, I think the perfect segue is the 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 Meg Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez. See, we we thought that I thought that was a joke too last week. We talked about Tory Lanez being the same height as Drew and shit. About <laughs> 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 like we look deeper as like I think Jarrell sent it to the group chat like a few days after the the episode was like Tory Lanez shot Meg Thee Stallion. So uh, according to reports, they were at a party. And Kylie Jenner was there, right? Like moments before it all took place, they did like an Instagram video or whatever. Yeah, like in the pool, yeah. Yeah. So after that, you know, allegedly, because we don't know all the facts yet, but allegedly, like Tory Lanez and Meg start to argue, and somehow shots were fired, and a lot of people, you know, stated earlier that Tory Lanez was shooting outside the car to protect him and Meg. But Meg came out on IG was like, no, I, I, they said she stepped on glass. Yeah. She's like, oh, no, I was shot. I was wounded. And then some other people at the scene said that Tory Lanez had shot Meg. That's a lot to unravel, though. I don't, I don't know how it gets to the point to where you end up shooting someone. And not only that, like, you're a man, you shoot a woman. And not only that... Y'all in a car together. This is a lot a lot for me to unpack. I think that we're, we're discussing this a little prematurely because we don't know all the facts yet. But, I mean, that, that, is, that, is, if that is true. That's crazy, bro. But I you mean, know, what's, coming out, what's coming out now is, like, supposedly, like, Meg was trying to leave and Tori didn't want her to leave is what really? I read. Again, that could be all just made up. But yeah. that is one of the stories that I read. Damn. So that's so he got mad at the fact that she was trying to leave and then she shot him. I mean, that he shot her. I don't know. So it looked it, so when I from what I saw from the Instagram video was that when Meg Thee Stallion and Kylie Jenner were standing right next to each other, she told Tori she already looked kind of annoyed with Tori. She was like, "Stop playing! Like, don't get my hair wet." Yeah. Right. Because she said something of, of, upon that upon those lines. We all we all know that game. <laughs> yeah, we we know that game. We know we know what comes with the territory. With, Remember you know, me in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I know. I, yo, <laughs> side story, dog. <laughs> I, don't, oh, I, don't, I don't know how to flirt. Shut up, dog. Shut up, dog. <laughs> I don't know how to flirt with women, dog. So we're in Miami. We're at the beach, dog. And, like, <laughs> there's some girls, dog, that's, that's by us. So we over there, like, you know, trying to do a little flirt thing. And, like, I was, like, trying to splash a little water on the girl. And I think I splashed it like all this water got on her hair. <laughs> and she's like, what the fuck? You got my motherfucking hair? What the fuck wrong with you? Dog? It like went left quick, dog. Like, we were like a little playing. Ha ha. Just a little flirt on to her. It just, uh, she went off on me, dog. Oh, shit. <laughs> and Jerome's like, damn. Jerome's like, damn. Jarrell's always got to fuck it up, man. Damn, dog. <laughs> really? Uh, the, cra- the craziest part about that, we were literally in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, you mad? Hey, you're mad that you're getting wet. You're, you're yeah, that was crazy. Standing, you're literally standing in the ocean. What do you expect? Yeah, it's crazy. So that was. So Tory Lanez got Meg's hair wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My fault. So we digressed. <laughs> so yeah. 
So apparently she was like, uh, don't get my hair wet or whatever. Because, but she, like I said, she already looked annoyed in the, in the video. Um, so I'm sure something transpired in the car. I mean, like I said, she already looked annoyed in the video. She didn't look like she was having fun. That's just me. This is me speculating my perspective. But she didn't look like she was having fun, bro. She did not no. look like she was having fun. Let's, let's remember, Megan Stallion ain't a little girl, no. She's like 5'10", five, 5'11". Five, bro, yes. Hell yeah. we yeah. are. We went already. We already went over the fact that Tory Lanez is five three. <laughs> bro, no. It's, let's, let's just. No, see, no, this is what I'm thinking, bro. This is what I'm thinking. Is that she might have two pieces ass up, bro. So he had to shoot. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, let's just say, let's just say, Megan <laughs> Stallion really was trying to leave. Tory Lanez, what, <laughs> what can he do? She's five <laughs> ten, five eleven. No, no. <laughs> she's. Is he supposed to grab one to her arm, pulling her down? Like, let's be real, dog. <laughs> bro, no bullshit. He's probably doing the shit the little kids do, you know, like when they sit on your leg and shit, dog, you be dragging them. <laughs> dog. <laughs> what if he thought that that was, it was, that was his only option? That was his only option. Dog. Bro, to shoot Meg the Stallion, bro, <laughs> just because the fact that she wants to leave, bro, is fucking crazy. That's crazy. There's more to the dog. story, dog. No way, dog. No fucking way. Dog, the, th the thing is that why would why would he need a gun in the first place? That's the thing, like... The crazy part is how did he get a gun in the United States? He's not even an American citizen. Come on now. Don't know don't be Don't be naive, Jarrell. No, I'm just saying, dog. He's Canadian, dog. No, like, anybody can get a gun, dog. It's not that hard to get a fucking gun, dude. What if it's not his? Anybody could have gave him a gun. I don't get it. Yeah, come the on. The thing is, why would he? why would he even bring a gun... To fucking Kylie Jenner's house, like he needed to be like a big man. <laughs> I don't he get to be it. A big man, dog, to protect him. No, I don't. I don't understand. I mean, I but understand. that. But I, I am gonna shoot Tory Lane some bill. I mean, Pop Smoke did get killed in L.A. He did. I mean, there's a lot of rappers who. Why? Why not people. have a security guard or somebody? Because uh, they don't want to pay for that. Dog. He has not plenty. Of, they don't want to pay for that. I'm just. You saying. got. Dog, they have plenty of money to play for a security guard for one night. I agree with you, I, but I'm just saying they don't want. No, to I would have flew. I would have flew out there, dog. Pay me, give me a check. I'll stay outside of Kylie Jenner's house for a whole night in the car. So we're gonna have two midget Max out there gardening. <laughs> <laughs> two midget Max out there gardening girls. All right, yeah, that's that's real estate, man. <laughs> that's, that's real estate. Two five three niggas, bro. <laughs> What y'all niggas gonna be Transformers and hop one hop on the other shoulders, bro? They start fighting niggas, bro. Like, <laughs> bro, we fucking laugh. Y'all niggas kill me, bro. Y'all kill me with this ridiculous shit that y'all be spewing out, bro. Y'all fucking kill me every fucking day. <laughs> oh, y'all have another grown man hop on top of another man's shoulders, dog. To take down one woman, dog. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Y'all are ridiculous. I'll do my LP shit. <laughs> <laughs> y'all boy funny, man. <laughs> oh, man. Bro, y'all are ridiculous, bro. For real. Yeah, but um, on a, on a serious note, you know, just prayers for Meg. Because, I mean, if, if she ended up getting killed... We wouldn't be over here laughing, dog. It wouldn't be funny. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, those type of situations, um, it just already seems to happen. Like, just talking to my dad about, like, what he's seen growing up in Boston and uh, what, what we lived through, dog, it seemed like the worst shit happens, like, during special occasions. Like, after parties, like, after some type of event, like, this bad shit tends to happen. But, yeah, um, yeah man, like, if, if, if Tory Lanez did shoot Meg the Stallion, like, Hey man, got got to get that jail time in, bro. And that that can like. But that was the other. That was the other part of it. Is like they were saying that uh, witnesses aren't cooperating, so like the cops don't have basically a story to go off of. So like nobody really knows essentially like what what happened. So it looks like so it looks like he may potentially get off of this, but still it's still a bad look for Tory Lane because he's the R and B guy. Like nobody sees. Tory Lanez as the as a gangster, and why the hell is he shooting fucking Meg The Stallion? You know, an yeah. up and coming female rapper. So it doesn't look good for him right now. Uh, just don't think, dog. He has way too many opportunities coming his way. Like he just signed like some deal coming off of the like um, what was the shit on Instagram? Quarantine. 
Oh, yeah, Quarantine Brady. Yeah, he just yeah. signed like a deal off of that, off of all the success. Like he's built up hella momentum. Like coming out of the quarantine, like he was the main one, like to actually profit off of it, like and gain some traction. Yeah. So it's like, and now you're just gonna throw it all away by shooting arguably one of the hottest rappers out. Like it's just yeah. and that, that was, it was a dummy move. But that's that's why I tell my students, and that's why I tell like the the young boys that I mentor, like your your anger can get you thrown away in prison. Like if you if you can't channel your anger, if if you have anger management issues and you're a hothead, you can end up serving real prison time or in a casket. Like those are the two options. So I, I feel like with this instant, as we know, this instance, as we know, we don't we don't know everything that has occurred. But if he did shoot Meg, a woman who really like posed no threat to him, as far as like his life wasn't in danger. Let's, there's more details we don't know yet. If his life was in danger, and you know she held a gun towards him, he had to protect himself. Okay, but if his life wasn't in immediate danger, for him to pull a trigger and do bodily damage, you know, it's, it's a woman, too. Yeah. It's like, really, dog? Like, it's, it's, it's never that serious. It's yeah. never that serious. It's just walk away. Because, I mean, I've been in instances where women have gotten physical with me. And it, it takes a lot of strength to just, you know, as a man, take your L and walk away. It's, it's never a good look as a man to, to fight back in that instance. Not to say you should sit sit there and take an ass whooping. Yeah. You know, like protect yourself, you know, restrain whoever's attacking you and just get out. Because it's not worth prison time. And at the end of the day, if the police come, you're not winning that battle at yeah. all. You're not. Yeah. So it, it's it's definitely, you know, not worth it, yeah. But um moving on. Tomorrow's gonna be it's been a while since we had a versus battle. So Jane and Pat. No, that, yeah, that was recent. I was like, that was like what three three weeks ago? A month ago, about a month, about a month. I feel yeah, like Versus was like weekly at one point. It might have been a month, and now at this point, they were they were weekly at one point. Yeah, yeah they, start, they they start slow down, but I'm not mad at this one. So this one is the the battle of the dogs. <laughs> DMX and the Snoop. S N double O P D O double G Snoop Doggy motherfuckers you better remember me I come through smoke that weed up I drink it up drink that gin and juice motherfucker and I got it in my cup that's Snoop dog I don't think Snoop raps like that dog I don't think he <laughs> raps like that <laughs> that wasn't a good one no uh, uh, uh. DMX you see me in a dog hit the spot that's my dog motherfuckers over there I might fuck you I might fuck you uh. DMX. That, that, that wasn't a oh, bad impression. That's not a bad impression. Yeah, dog. Not, Shot, okay. Hey, yo, DMX is saying some questionable shit. Like he said. Oh, who much of the 90s rappers say the questionable shit, though? He said, I pull my meat out and bust in your ear so you can hear me coming. He said it. I didn't say it, dog. I didn't say it. DMX said it. So this, this conversation get uncomfortable, dog. Can we get back on track, dog? <laughs> DMX definitely <laughs> said it, all right? So who do y'all got, got in the battle? Who do y'all got in the battle? DMX, dog. DMX. DMX. Let's get it. Woo-hoo! I feel like the, the only way DMX can win, he gonna have to use the Jada Kiss strategy. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's that's what that's what he's gonna use. Wait DMX a minute, like, though. But Wait the thing minute. is, Snoop's Snoop? hits are a thousand times better than Fab's hits. Yes. So Snoop, I don't know. Snoop has street hits, so don't do that. I, I don't I know do the same. Go ahead. Here's the thing. I think Snoop has too much to pull from. DMX only got to pull from two albums. His first two. No. I'm Snoop. like, if, you, if it's concise like that. Hey, what, what if, it, if if DMX plays slipping? That's all night W. I'm slipping. I'm falling. No, that's, that's not, not an automatic, automatic W. Automatic W. Um, no, Rough Riders Anthem, automatic W. There's automatic Ws in there. All right, so Rough Riders Anthem versus uh, Steel Dre. Well, who wins? Guess what? No, that's Rough Riders Anthem. Thing. Rough Riders Anthem. What? Bro, this dude always is tripping, bro. He is tripping. No, Rough Riders Anthem is not... <laughs> 
He can't even watch fucking nothing but a G things jock strap, nigga. You're tripping right now. It's better. You are fucking tripping right now. It's better for a battle, dog. It gets me hype. Dog, nothing but a G thing is so damn smooth, bro. You're tripping. I know, but Rough Riders Anthem is going to get you hyped in a battle. There will be some people that will pick Rough, Rough Riders Anthem, but the thing with right, DMX... So what, fuck, what about Fuck With Dre Day? <clears throat> what? Fuck With Dre Day. Are you really going to use that? Yeah, yes. but that's like... Uh, Who was on that song? I mean, it's, I don't think that's a good... <clears throat> appear, oh, no. What? Yeah, I, I don't think. Bro, y'all are tripping. That's definitely going to be played in the battle. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't, I don't think it's going to play that. Gin and juice. Well, of course. All you got to do is get at me, dog. Um, We ride, hit. Like, you got a lot of hits, dog. Get it on the floor. What about two, what about two of America's Most Wanted? Stop being greedy. Two of America's Most Wanted. You're not answering the questions. Oh, that's a dub. That has Tupac on That's a dub. Still Dre. That's a dub. <laughs> Bro, you, 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 you need to go back and look at them records, young man. You need to go back and look at them records. I think DMX. Another thing that's going to help Snoop is that his catalog is more well-known than DMX. Worldwide? It is. Jarvis, Jarvis don't, don't do it, bro. <laughs> Worldwide, do age-wide, color-wide, whatever, however wide you want to go, nigga. <laughs> Snoop oh, Dogs. What, how is Dre going to come to um, what, about, what, Jarvis, these what, about, want, what, what these bitches want from a nigga? What about down for my niggas, Jarvis? What 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 they really want with Cisco and DMX don't beat anything. That's all Mac does. What about be- what about beautiful? I don't think he's gonna play that. You what, bro? Yo, yo, what are you talking about? Something is wrong with Jarvis, bro. Something is wrong with boy. Why wouldn't he play that? I don't get it. What about uh, how's he can play that with how beautiful? Okay, beautiful verse. How's it going down? What was that? What type of games is being played? How's it going now? It's on. I rock the how's it going now. That's going to be like beautiful. That's better than beautiful. What about drop it? What about no, drop no, no, it? No, like no, no, no. Admit that how's it going down is better than beautiful. I say I mean, beautiful. I, I, I agree with you. I personally like how's it going down. Majority will say beautiful win that, though. But yeah, people but, got played out, though. I feel, like a lot, I feel like a lot of Snoop's catalog, because he's such a big artist, like a lot of songs got played out. Like beautiful didn't age well to me. What? Yo, Dan. I, I think I think Snoop's like lyrics are gotten trash. Like drop it like a side. You listen to the lyrics on drop it like a side. It's, it's very whack, dog. It's a bit super whack, super trash. I like right, let's not act. Like, let's not act like DMX didn't make any whack tracks. Let's not do that. I'm just saying I'm I'm giving it nod to X. And if I'm wrong, I just we'll talk about it. I just hope X is clear minded, bro. That, that's the one thing I'm hoping for. Like, I just hope he's clear minded, like, not ODing, not cr- doing nothing crazy. Like, just. No, nah, that's not happening. Just, he's, X is definitely going to be drunk. No, nah, I, need, I need X clear minded, bro. He's sober, though. I don't think he <laughs> drinks or smokes anymore. Yeah, really? I just need, I just need X clear minded, bro. Hey, that'll be know, dope, bro. But you know, X doesn't have good Wi Fi. He doesn't have good Wi Fi. We know. We know. We know Snoop is going to be high. We already know that. Oh, hopefully, they're both in the same place, like the last couple ones. I hope so. Who are you going to win a fight between DMX and um, Snoop Dogg right now? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I think Snoop will wash him. Snoop is OD skinny, dog, but Snoop. <laughs> no, no. Well, listen, listen, though. Snoop, Snoop be doing boxing lessons. Not enough power. <laughs> Not enough power. It, the, the, they both come on now. I mean, Jarvis, right now. Jarvis is frozen. Jarvis is frozen, dog. I ain't frozen. I'm frozen right now. Yeah, Jarvis is like this. <laughs> I ain't frozen. I'm good, dog. I heard they gonna have a dog fight though. Like after the battle. All right like, now. <laughs> Mike Vick gonna be the referee, dog. Mike Vick <laughs> be there, dog. Bro, y'all are assholes, dog. Y'all not gonna do that to the seven. Nah, the, the pit versus Doberman. Who y'all got? Pit. A pit. Mm, okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we said something crazy. Mm, okay. <laughs> nah, but um yeah, but DMS so has pack head strength though. I, I think I think <laughs> DMS does have crack head strength. Bro, y'all are cutting up today, bro. Bro, I think so I do think Snoop is gonna win this battle. I think I don't think it's gonna be a landslide. 
I'm gonna curious. go like thirteen, like thirteen seven, Snoop. Yeah, I can see something like that, or maybe maybe even closer than that. You know, I got X winning, dog. Not by large margin. Hey, but side note, dog. I got a story about Snoop, bro. I got a story. So one of my coworkers, dog, <laughs> he from LA, dog. <laughs> no, Jars always be telling these fake ass stories, bro. Go ahead, bro. Uh, my boy said that he worked at least this security for a college or whatever, right? So he said like these two dudes like tried to to break into like a dorm room, whatever, right? So they had caught them dudes, whatever, right? And he said that like two of the guys were in there, like one of the dudes was like in there like crying. And he said, What's your name? He said, My name is Calvin Broadus, sir. And he's like crying. And he's like, yo, like he said, please don't, please don't report me to the police. Please don't. Like, I just got a record deal with Dr. Dre. Like, please, whatever you do, like, don't report me to the cops. And he said, dog, he said, like, a few weeks later, like, he saw, like, Snoop, like, on a music video. He's like, dog, that's that Mark-ass dude that was out here crying in the damn uh, security office, dog. He said, dog, he said, I'm telling you, dog, cuz ain't got no type of heart. Cuz ain't got no type of heart. He, he said he didn't get in the streets. He has no street credibility, dog. So, I mean, shout out to Snoop, bro. <laughs> how you going to – How you, no, 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 I'm not letting you get that off. How you going to tell a story about Snoop? Snoop? Shitting on Snoop, basically saying that he's a busted dog, and then say shout out to Snoop Dog. What? <laughs> it's good marketing, dog. It's good marketing. Dog. Nigga Jarvis, some random ass nigga that was a security guard. You <laughs> go and take his word for it. <laughs> I'll tell you, dog, real stuff, dog. Dennis Rodman used to work for my granddad, dog. My granddad. <laughs> dog. My grandfather fired Dennis Rodman, dog, from staring at... No, Jarvis, shut up, bro. Where do you come up with this shit, bro? Get out of here, dude. Ask my bro, mom. Do just, bro, do you just bro. wake up in the morning and just say, this is the random shit I'm going to tell on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 job, what job did Dennis, did Dennis Rodman have, dog? So, my grandfather back in the day in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, he owned, like, a janitorial service. And Dennis Rodman, like, was one of his, like, maintenance men. And Dennis Rodman, like, stole something from one of the stores in the airport, and my grandfather had to fire him. So, shout out to Dennis Robin too, dog. Shout out to him. <laughs> y'all don't be believing me, dog. Y'all think I'm capping, dog. I, I'm not capping. Bro, we need some validation from these stories, bro. We need to, everybody who tells you a story, bro, we need to have them on the podcast, bro, to validate. But, dog, you think about it, Snoop, if he thought that he's about to get a record deal, dog, and the cops get involved, like, you don't see him, like, getting, like, emotional about that? No. <laughs> it happens to rappers all the time. But that's before he got on. Even J. Cole said that he got arrested the night before he signed his record deal. I read, I, I read his article, dog, earlier. We're going to talk about that next week, dog. But J. Cole <laughs> is a kitty man. I'm going so I'm, I'm to give y'all a little snippet, dog. He said that <laughs> he was one of the 10 dudes that made the final cut at St. John's. And he said that, like, he had to leave for tryouts at 615. And he was like, nah, I want to be a rapper. I got to pursue my rap dream. So I want to play college ball. And he fell asleep. And then he said at 31 years of age that he wanted to go play <laughs> rap and play pro ball, dog. And he said he, he was playing at Lifetime. That's when he figured out he wasn't that good. I'm like, you're 31 years old. You find you're not that fucking good in basketball, dog? <laughs> I don't get it, no, dog. No, but just like I told you, dog, at, you know, rappers want to be athletes and athletes want to be rappers. That's always been the case. That's true. J. Cole's a kitty man, dog. But I'm looking forward to the, the DMX. I'm surprised Snoop signed on for this battle. You know, we talked about, like, different tiers that rappers, like, see themselves in. So, like, 50 Cent pitted himself against Snoop, and he thinks he's too big to do something with T.I. But I feel like Snoop, just like you said, like, from the outside looking in, is a way bigger artist than, Snoop, than DMX. DMX is like a, a four-year run, if we being real. But I think, I think what helps DMX's case is that they were both 90s artists. So, I think DMX is more so late '90s, early 2000s, and but Snoop is kind of more so of a generational guy. So, well, I want to yeah. see like Snoop and Jay Z, like that would be a good battle. Uh, Snoop has too much of a longevity, like too many, yeah. too much stuff to pick from, like too many albums, like Snoop. I mean, dog, th just think about it, dog. You got his Death Row, he got the Death Row albums, then he has the No Limit albums, then he has the Star Trek albums. You got a lot, a lot, a lot of hits, dog. Yeah. As long as you don't play nothing from the Snoop Lion shit, he'll be fine. Yeah, that one. Hey, the, the Snoop Gospel album was all right. 
Hey, y'all can say what y'all want. It was all right. It won't be. I like Snoop. I'm biased. I like Snoop. I like Snoop, dog. I think that he he has a new song that's out, bro. I forgot. It's on um, it's on someone's. um, You're shaking his head, no, dog. Janae, Janae, Janae's deluxe album, like Snoop Dogg's on on a track on that joint. Yeah, it's with Chris Brown. Yeah, was, he didn't write that though. I don't think Snoop wrote. Hey, that. that's who I would. That's who I would love to hear uh, on a battle, Chris Brown on the verses. But that's the thing. Who who's on a really who has a catalog that Chris Brown Usher. has? Like Usher, Usher, R. Kelly, but well, he's canceled. So. And that's a funny shit too. That we we should have talked about Boozy, but. We'll, we'll talk, we can talk about that on, on another podcast, though. Boozy, what Boosie do? <laughs> you didn't see the video? Did you see the video I sent you this weekend? Nah. Matter of fact, last time we talked about Boozy, we had to like edit out the whole entire... No, nah, we're not going to have to edit this out. <laughs> so Boozy basically was on Vlad TV, dog, and Boozy was like, R. Kelly <laughs> is the GOAT of, what do you say, R&B? And then he He's was like, he was like, so the Vlad was like, well, what about Stevie Wonder? And he was like, he he ain't fucking with R. Kelly now. Come on now. He said, what about Michael, what about Michael Jackson? He said, Michael Jackson? Hell no. Michael Jackson can't fuck with no R. Kelly. And I was like, dog, Michael Jackson can fuck with R. Kelly, bro. Like, you're tripping right now. He, he basically was saying no, R. Kelly is unbeatable in the versus battle. Like, nobody can beat R. Kelly. And that's when he brought up, like, Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder. Because he said, living or dead. Like, nobody can, nobody can beat him. Then he started naming Stevie Wonder songs. Like, Boosie's like, never heard it. Never heard it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but what, I will say something, dog. Boozy is definitely on to something, bro. Because R. Kelly, bro, he has a lot of hits. He's not better than Mike. I'm not going to go that fucking far. He wrote for Michael Jackson, though. You Are Not Alone. He wrote that song for Mike. Yeah, I mean, R. Kelly wrote for a lot of damn people. If you go and go look at all those tracks that R. Kelly wrote for, he wrote for Aaliyah, he wrote for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So, who was R. Kelly saying that to, though? You're not alone? Yeah. Who did he write that for? For Michael Jackson. No, but, like, who Who did he have in mind? Oh, there was a – see, you trying to get me – you trying to get us canceled, dog. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, you – R. Kelly, dog, his, his it's, catalog it's, is all is, – is, is done. It, yeah, you can't – you can't listen to it without thinking, dog. It's done. It's All done. right. Okay. No, okay. but no, 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 no. I, I, I can't listen to You Are Not Alone anymore because, like, the girl on the um, Surviving R. Kelly said that R. Kelly, like, had sex, had raped her as a teen, and she get, got her abortion, and that's the You Are Not Alone. I'm here with you. It was about her losing the baby, and R. Kelly, like, aborted the baby with her. With a teenager, bro. Uh, all of his catalog is stained, bro. It's stained. So y'all... What, ha- what? Matter of fact, where the hell is R. Kelly at? In jail, nigga. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> is he right? Is he right there? I thought he was out. I thought he was out. Nigga said, "Where's R. Kelly?" Nah, he got out. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Did he, did he get? Bro, y'all are tripping what? right now. Bro, bro what are you not talking about? R. Kelly is not currently in jail, bro. Oh, he's not in jail, dog. He's, he's locked up. Bro. This nigga's in jail. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Dog, this nigga raped like a hundred women. This nigga's in jail, dog. I don't get it. <laughs> I thought he got out. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, nigga, I he'll get out. Yeah, I he'll get he out in the bail. coffin. I thought he got bail. <laughs> no, he, no, he's not. He's no. not going anywhere. <laughs> he's in jail forever. The rest of his life. He's not getting out, dog. <laughs> he can kiss that shit goodbye. Man, I'm dog. sick, dog. Lock, locked up and threw away the key on his ass? Yes. Oh, for this man to have a bed in the studio, dog. He's a sick uh, dog. He's a sick individual, bro. But my thing is, I don't understand how, like, us as kids, when R. Kelly first had the video come out, we were kids, dog. Damn, he really But the is. adults, like, he, he, like, continued to have, like, he got bigger than ever after the sex tape with a teenager. Oh, no, he's about to get released. Yeah. It says uh, R. Kelly's diabetic should be released from jail due to COVID-19 concerns, lawyers argue. Two days yeah, he's going to be released from one jail to another jail. Yeah, lawyer, be, lawyers argue. Be, yeah, he'll be. He'll probably be on house arrest. No, nah, he's not getting out. He's not getting out. <laughs> he's done, dog. He, he's okay, y'all. I agree with y'all. He's done, but he's gonna get out. He's probably gonna get on house arrest, and then once COVID passes, he's probably going back in jail. All right. So, but, but matter of fact, dog, you know who I miss seeing, dog? I miss seeing six nine on social media, bro. I miss seeing him troll people, dog. I don't. 
I'm glad. He'll, he'll be back. He's just he'll waiting for he's he's waiting for him to uh like for the house arrest to end and then he'll be out. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't ever want to see. I don't. I'm never gonna click on another Takashi video, bro. I'm done. Why? He's, he's a cornball to me, dog. He's a cornball. He's funny. Yeah, he's funny. He's top. He's top five troll in the game next to fifty. I don't care about troll. I'm a grown ass man. Like, who gives a fuck about? Shut him? up, Jarvis. You out of all people in this fucking podcast love trolling the most. You love Fifty Cent when Fifty Cent be trolling people, dog. You love that yeah. shit. I was a kid. Of course, I like that. I'm, I'm a. No. You still like it? What Jarvis, are you talking about? Jarvis, you like Gilly the Kid? He's he's one of the biggest trollers. So let's talk. Let's get into that then. Let's, let's get, get let's into get into that. Let's, let's get, get into just it. say your great. You just say your granddaddy knew Dennis Rodman, dog. You, you're yeah. a big. You're, you you troll for a living, dog. It happened, dog. Yeah, right. you troll though. You troll. But speaking of Gilly, dog. So listen. My two favorite podcasts at one point before we dropped our podcast, we got the best podcast in the world right now. But um, before we dropped our podcast, yeah, Gilly, I it's all shit. And who, yeah, who owns, owns this? Who owns this shit? Three black men, Gilly. Three black men own it, Gilly. We own our IP, dog. Do we? I don't think we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, 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 Look, it sound good though. It sound hella good. <laughs> you just gotta roll with me, dog. Roll. With yeah, we we own our IP, right? <laughs> Fuck out here, Gilly. Um, three black men. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so the basically the two of the top, the biggest podcasts in the game have been going at it, you know, for over you know a month now, being a Joe Budden podcast. And um, million dollars worth of game podcast. So basically, Gilly, four years ago, you know, they bring up old shit from you from your past. So four years ago, Gilly's saying that you know he's not down with the Black Lives Matter movement and to Black Lives Matter Black people, and basically he's saying like all lives matter. And he was shot, and the 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 um the Black Lives Matter when someone tried to execute him, and all this stuff, right? So. Later on that day, like Gilly, like clarified that yeah, it's an old um, video clip of me, and I'm down with Black Lives Matter, but he kind of like really didn't take ownership because he's basically saying like Black Lives should matter to Black people. So he he took a stance. He kind of said the same thing he said prior, other than saying that he he's with Black Lives Matter now. So Joe Budden got on his podcast and basically called Gilly like a a. a a goof, a doofy. He's he's a doof, and you know he's basically spitting the same rhetoric that um, Jason Whitlock of the world, like you know people like them, T- the Terry Cruises of the world, where all eyes matter. And Gilly has a big platform, and you know since he's spewing that, like he can't respect it. And then Gilly came on, basically like blasted um, Joe Budden, and he had an episode called Joe Budhead. So basically <laughs> saying that basically like Joe Budden doesn't own his podcast, a white man owns his podcast, and all this other stuff. So last thing to note, supposedly like this is white guy um, who owns Barstool, David, David Portnoy. David Portnoy. David Portnoy said that Gilly says that he that he he is a white man can use the N word. So that's a whole separate. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot going on, basically. That's crazy. So my thing is, like, where, where do you stand with that, Drew? I mean, for me, it's hard to say because at this point, we don't really have the facts. Like, Gilly saying Joey doesn't own, like, they don't own their podcast or whatever. Um, and, like, basically, he's he working for a white man. And then Gilly is saying that they're partners. Like, they don't, they don't have a boss. They have a partnership. So it's kind of hard to say without the facts. But Joey is a person who always is big on ownership. Like, he's been on this, on the ownership wave for a while now. Like, always saying, like, you need to own your stuff. So if it comes out that he, in fact, doesn't really own it, then that's, that's kind of crazy. It's but I'm going to give Joey the benefit of the doubt, though, because, like, like I said, he has been big on ownership for like years now. That's one of the main things like he preaches. So I, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say that's not true. Um, but the one thing about 
what Gilly said is like, yeah, black lives need to matter all the time. That's not like he's changing what the meaning of black lives matter is. Like that's, I feel like that's something totally separate yep. than the black lives matter movement that we're fighting for. Like that, yes, that's true. Like we shouldn't be killing our own people. All that is true, but that has, that's totally separate from the black lives matter movement. And I feel like that's what Joey was trying to get across. Like you can't respond to black lives matter with, but why is a black man trying to shoot me? Like, those don't go hand in hand with one another. Yeah, because like the this this like I said on a few podcasts ago, like yes, it is wrong, like black on black crime is wrong, period. But in the same stance, like why is that you know marketed towards black people? Like white people kill white people, Hispanics yeah. kill Hispanics. I hate that shit. Asians kill Asians. How are they they blow up like us, like we we don't care about each other, like Crime is about proximity. Point blank. Exactly. Like, point blank. Like, no, like, people from Third Ward don't say, you know what? Hmm, I'm in Third Ward, but Jarvis, he lives in Katy. The artist black man named Jarvis he lives in Katy. We're going to go all the way to Katy. We're going to rob his ass. We're going to yeah. kill him. Like, to me, that, that's why I'm like, okay, that's why I'll draw a line. But it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like you said, it's all about who you're around. Yeah. If you go in the middle of Iowa, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of white on white crime. Like, what is that? It doesn't, that doesn't matter. Like yeah. you're going to, crime is going to happen with who's living there. Yeah. Like it, it's just a dumb argument. And that's what, that's why I had a, um, I had an argument with one of my, not a, a debate with one of my friends this week. And he's basically saying, he's talking about black on black crime. And he was like, basically like we should fight hate with love. And I'm like, these racist ass cops, you, you can love the oppressor all you want. Don't mean they going to treat you right. They still gonna do the same thing they've been doing. So you, you can fight love with hate all you want, but it's it's not gonna work. Period. So yeah, but back to Gilly. It was four years ago. The climate has changed a lot within the last shit, four months. So you can dig up old tweets with stuff that we said four, five, ten years ago. It's gonna look absolutely nuts. But I don't like the fact that he really didn't take ownership and responsibility. But that's on brand with what Gilly does. So, I mean, was I surprised? No. I'm definitely going to check out that Joe, um, the Joe Butthead episode sometime this week, dog. I, have I, can't wait. I can't wait for Joey's response, too. I don't think he's going to respond. I don't think he's going to respond. Bruh. You know? I think, I think Joey will respond. Because now, basically, he threw Maul and, and Rory into it now, basically saying, like, they don't own, the, they don't own their shit. So now, like, Maul, I feel like Maul and Rory going to have something to say. Yeah. But I don't know. They, it's always weird with, with uh, Rory and Maul because, like, whenever they got into their beefs with the Breakfast Club and Charlemagne and stuff like that, like, they kind of chilled on it. Like, Rory is a little bit more outspoken than Maul. Maul is more so the more chill one. He kind of lets shit slide sometimes. But I don't know. I think Rory may say something, but I think Maul is a super chill one. I, unless it crosses a line to where it's, like, super disrespectful, I don't think Maul will say anything. Or Rory, actually. And, and I backtrack. I think, I think they'll say something, but they're not going to respond directly to Gilly. They'll say, oh, we, they, they, we heard out here on the streets that we don't own our IP. Yeah, I can it's see them like doing that. something like that. A, a, lot, a lot of gunshots, a lot of sirens, a, a lot of um, drops. But, uh, yeah. So we, we have a pod question, dog. A power question. This is from a, one of the, the, my young boys. My, one of my young boys hit me up. And he basically was saying that he met a young lady and he asked to take her on a date. And she said that it has to be a minimum of $300 if he wants to take her out. He said, what should he do? Is, is that tricking? $300? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go go to her name in the contacts and delete it. <laughs> that that's what we should do. I'm with him on that. Go to the contact list and delete it. Nah. No, three hundred dollars on a date, dog. You got to pay to play. Yeah, yeah. and it's and it's plenty of people to play with. <laughs> I don't get it. Hey, but no, she, she has her standards, and either he, can, either he can get with her standards, or he can not. But if he wants to. To um, to what's the word I'm looking for, Jarrell? 
If he wants to court her, if he wants to Shit, court her. I'm not courting. $300 is not courting. Fuck that. I'm not letting you get that off. I'm saying if that's what he wants and that's her standards, then go for it. No. Drop the 300 bread, dog. Drop it. No. Oh, oh $300 dog. is a lot. $300 is a lot of money to be spending, dog. And it's the first date. They don't even really know each other. Like, what are y'all going to? Ruth Chris Steakhouse? Yeah, why not? That's what she wants. Yeah, but my thing, is, it, it, my thing is this, little homie. Either you're going to do it or someone else is going to do it. If you don't want if you don't want she's letting you know off, she's letting you know off, off jump what she's about. Bro, dog, $300 is a car payment. Yeah. I'm cool. It ain't worth it. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't. Does, does, oh, okay, Jordan. Does it matter? Let's keep it real. If she is straight up dime, dog. So like, there, there's, there's. I remember back when we were single, way, 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 way back. Many moons, many yeah. moons ago, a thousand moons ago. And there was a, there was a fitness girl, and she was very attractive, dog. Very attractive. And she asked for a three hundred dollar date. Y'all gonna give her that? No. <laughs> no. Let, let's let's keep, no. Let's keep it all. Let's keep it all the way real, dog. Let's keep it real. You can pay the three hundred, and that could be it. She can eat. Be like, all right, thank you for the meal. Yeah. <laughs> say, you, say, say that she didn't enjoy the date, but you thought the date went really well. You spent three hundred dollars on the first date, dog, and that's it. Down the drain. It might not even. It might not even go well. It could go terribly. You still go out the pay. Like, there's Dude, too I'm, many I'm factors. not going to let y'all get that off, dog. It, as young men, this is this, this a learning lesson, young men. You, if you go on a date with a woman, why are you expecting anything in return? No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. Okay. We didn't say we, didn't say we were expecting anything in return. I said, what if the date went bad? You can naturally just go on a date and have conversation with a person and just not be good. I mean, it's an L. Like, we, all, we all taking L's. I'm not taking a $300 L. Exactly. <laughs> No, the day could go. <coughs> the day could go great. She still, she still could just chuck up the deuce and never talk to you again. And that's three hundred dollars down the drain for what? I'm, I'm gonna keep it a bean with y'all, dog. I was on a date one time, dog. You've never spent three hundred dollars, so stop the shit. I know you're about to fucking cat. Don't cat. You've never spent three hundred dollars on a first date, so stop, Jarvis. <laughs> stop, dog. Stop, bro. I was on a date, dog. And um, shit. I'll be all real with you, dog. Like, it was a lot of bread, dog. It was like 200, upwards of 200, dog. And this is like me and my, I was a college student, dog. I remember at that date, dog, I had to like go on my savings account and like transfer the bread from my savings to my checking, dog. This, this was the first date. <laughs> I was traveling, dog. It was a first date? Yeah. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I called Cat. I called Cat on this situation, bro. It was multiple. It was our first date, but we went to multiple like settings. Like, we went so to like, y'all go. Where'd y'all go? Break it down for me. We want to go get sushi. That was first, right? Okay. And then, because we was at Virginia Beach. So I then I had to like rent bikes for us to like ride the bikes up the beach. And then like, um, there's like a carnival. So we had to do like the carnival joint. It was like a Jasmine date, bro. You know what you're talking about? She was on that date from like 6 a.m. Yeah, to like 9 o'clock at night. Yeah. It jazz, going, jazz going 12 hour dates. And then, dog, we went like to um, go to like a, not like a hookah lounge, but like a, a bar area. And after that, she wants some dinner, dog. So it was a, it was a good two hundred. Well, I will, I will say this: I don't feel like you have to spend three hundred dollars on a date with somebody for it to be a good date. Like, bro, I know plenty yeah. of women, uh, where you could just easily go out for a cup of coffee. You could sit dog. down and chat with them. Create you know? creativity is always going to trump spending a lot. Exactly. Nice. You can go, you can go to the beach. You know, chill with them. Y'all go for a walk on the beach. You can go ride bikes. I mean, bro, you got to find something that they're interested in. Yeah. That's how, that's how you really impress them, dog. Bro, go kayaking on the first date. I'm not doing, I'm not doing anything athletic on the first date. Why? Not. Not. Jarvis runs like a baby giraffe. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm good. But, dog, like, me and my girl, our first date was at, at, at like, a um, coffee spot, bro. So, I mean, it was free. There you go. The thing about it is that says a lot about the woman. If she, if she, if that's one of the things that she has to have, like you don't want to be with her anyway. She got the wrong, she got the wrong type of values, dog. But I mean, that, 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 that's my point. A lot of money throughout the relationship. That's my point. 
that's her standard. So if you want to get with her, that's her standard, then by all means, go by it. But if you have your morals, your moral compass, and you're like, nah, I'm not willing to do that, then don't do it. I think too many times, like, young men get caught into that trap of, oh, we got to court. We got to do, like, such and such. Like, no, like, you have a mind of your own. If you want to go out and spend that bread, spend it. If you don't, don't. Simple as that. Because, like, I've had women I talked to, like, who who needed, like, financial help. Like, oh, I, I'm short on my light bill. Like, he loaned me, like, $50. And if I'm close to them, like, yeah, go ahead. Whatever. It's nothing. But I don't have it. And I'll, I'll, if I don't have it and or I feel like I'm getting played, I'm not going to put the money down. So. That's fair. That's me, dog. That's me. And speaking of dates, dog, I know y'all don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. 50 Cent, bruh. Was on a date. Bruh. Was on a date, dog. So, dude, was popping off the 50, dog, on a date. 50 picked up an entire table, dog, and threw it at this man. No, he picked up a chair. Don't cap. Don't try to act like 50 is the Hulk or something like that, bro. He threw a chair at someone, dog. Like, how upset do you have to be when you picture you on a date, dog? You in your bag. You know, dang, girl. But apparently it was a dude that had been stalking him. Like, it wasn't. Is, he's trolled him before. This, this is the same dude that's trolled him before in Florida. Yeah, this wasn't like a random dude that was inter- trying to interrupt. Like, he knew the guy. Well, he knew of him. He didn't know him. Like, he knew of oh, him. It's, oh, it's the dude that when I said 50 Cent can't dress, the dude basically, like, 50 Cent had, like, on, like, a um a, a lumberjack shirt, dog, like, long sleeve with some, like, baggy-ass cargoes. <laughs> the, dude, the dude trying to, like, ask him for if 50 can listen to a SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro. You, know, you, know, you know how irate you have to be, dog, to be on a date? Like, dang, girl. Look at the stars. Beautiful out here. You look good, girl. For someone to interrupt your date and you get into that bag to like you throwing a chair at someone, dog. You know how fucking piss you gotta make me, dog. For me to throw a chair at you, bro. Bro, because fifty probably told him to leave him alone, dog. Get away, dog. You probably wouldn't stop, bro. No, we just talked about this earlier with with what you know, controlling your temper. You talked about it, Jarvis. You gotta control your anger, dog. Fifty Cent has way too much to lose. He has way too much to lose. What if he like hit him in the head and like he knocked him unconscious or something, like? He has too much to lose, bro. He could have got sued. And that's that dog. The, the table almost hit that white lady, dog. If you looked at, if you it's watched not it. a table. It's a chair. <laughs> dog. That's wild, dog. Fifty's a wild boy, bro. Fifty is a wild boy. Bro, I'm still trying to figure out why Fifty is ducking this Ti, this Ti versus. Not happening, dog. He doesn't feel like Ti's on his level. Yeah, that's disrespectful. It's it's too. I think it's too much of a risk. If he loses to Ti, I mean the, the common fan be like, okay, I mean, sure. wait a minute, wait a minute, what, what's the risk? Fifty, because it's not relevant anymore. But he's still no, late. It's Fifty Cent though. Most people are gonna say Fifty is supposed to win that. Yeah, I I believe in regional bias, but go ahead. I, that's why I think Fifty Fifty wanted to battle someone of Snoop's caliber because he's I not think on Snoop's caliber. But he thinks he is, dog, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, Snoop, if, if Snoop is battling DMX, Snoop, damn sure will battle 50 Cent. Like, not, don't OD. I think DMX would would beat 50, but that's not crazy to say. I'm not, I, I, don't, I, I, think, I think they're very comparable. Yeah. I think that would be a good battle. They're very comparable artists, and they have, like, the same amount of classics. Yeah. I mean, 50 Cent might have – have I think DMX might have more like group songs yeah. they can pull from. That'd be I'll be close though. That'll be close. A lot of 50 cents like hits I, I listened to over the weekend, dog. They really didn't age well, dog. Like they didn't. I try to tell y'all boys that y'all like, didn't in the listen. club doesn't hit. Wankster. <laughs> yeah, you the gangster, but you never pop. No. Are you on Dan? No, I listened. I listened to Wayne yesterday. Matter of fact, and, and it wasn't that bad. But the the beat is weak, though. The beat is hell. But weak. you gotta think also in a battle, like you don't know what's coming next. So like just hearing the beat alone, like that's gonna get people hype. Bro, that shit is like that shit is like a changes beat, bro. Do 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 I'll say, listen to this bullshit. Like, no, like, this did not it. All a nigga really need is a little bit. Not a lot, baby girl. Just a little bit. I want to unbutton your pants just a little no, bit. No, 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 no. Fuck that. No, 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 no. I'm not giving that to you and Drew. 
Because you and Drew, I sent y'all that from the massacre, and y'all were like, I like that shit. That shit still goes. Y'all well, just I said, said, I said disco. I said, um, what's that I song? A little bit, and y'all said it still goes. So don't do that. Hey, Drew, I'm just trying to make still- content right now, dog. <laughs> Drew, you like just a little bit? I think it's still a good song. <laughs> Get the lick and the touch in a little bit. I'm not a 50 Cent fan, though, but so bit. I'm not going to listen to none of that shit. I don't even listen to Get Rich or Die Trying. I'm not a 50 fan. So. But no, I'm talking about, what's that song that with Mob Deep? Um, Out of Control. Out of Control. That's what you I, said. I, that, that shit's still called the original still. No, good. no. I said the original Out of Control is not good. The Out of Control remix is good. That's like one of my favorite 50 songs. I like the Out of Control, like the original, too. No. No. But then, I think Wayne said, but a lot... A little bit in Candy Shop. I was, I was watching the Candy Shop video. <laughs> no, that shit is corny as hell, dog. No, Candy Shop is trash. And Drew said oh, that was a good song, too. You just said that was a good the song. The song is good. The video's trash. Y'all stop. stop. Bro, it's a hit. At the end of the day, it's still a hit. I know what, I know what Drew's saying. That He never took a girl to the Candy Shop before. That's why. You ain't never took a girl to the Candy Shop, B. I don't think you have either. What does that even mean, man? He said, I melt in, <laughs> he said, I melt in your mouth, girl, not in your hands. Ha ha. So you already know what he's talking about, dog. I let you lick the lollipop. Go ahead, girl. Don't you. Look at Drew. Look at Drew. Drew said. He said, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> he said, keep going till you reach the top. Whoa. What's whoa mean? Whoa. You busting up. Whoa. All right now, boy. You ain't got to bring it down from like a five years old, though. That's we what it, it means. You never took a girl to the candy shop. So. This nigga talking like Candy Shop is a lyrical miracle shit. Like, that needs a, that needs a lyric breakdown. Nigga, we get it. <laughs> no, but not deep. No, Drill said, what, what, is, what does he mean by Candy Shop? What I does he mean that. by that? I'm going to go on genius. Rap genius. I'm going to figure it out. He got uh, show, show the phone again. <laughs> <laughs> no, nigga, Jarvis act like this is a Black Thought freestyle. This nigga got to break every fucking bar down. Bro, okay, yeah. nigga. Hey, man. All I'm trying to say is Drill don't like because he never took a girl to the candy shop, right? You don't like it, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if y'all are excited about the candy shop, bro, y'all got it, bro. And Olivia, candy dog. Shop. Olivia looked good back in the day, bro. She still looks good. She's still attractive. I ain't seen her recently, but yeah, she used to look good. Yeah. I don't know why she didn't pop off. I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand. She had a, I don't know. She had 50 Cent at the top of his game. And she, I don't think she ever had an album be released either. But um, shout out to Olivia. <laughs> Dude, shout out everybody. Yeah, dog. This is the shout out. All right. So we're going to end this how we usually end this. Did we talk about Nick Cannon? Oh! The boy getting old, dog. <laughs> Your boy get old, dog. Nick, I'm glad. Look, that's that's why that's why Drew, Drew, you forgot about it too. Don't cap. I ain't. I was waiting. I was, I was looking at you like this. I mean, I mean, I was looking for you, dude. I mean, I know I was looking for y'all. Yo, look at look at Pierre, dog. Look at Pierre, dog. <laughs> this boy, dog. Come on, dog. All right, on, I'm, I'm gonna let you lead, um, Drew. Me? Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I tried last part. I'm done. All right, I'm damn. Done. So uh, you got it, Drew. Go ahead. You got this one. Mm-mm. So Nick Cannon, and I, I'm sure if, unless you're living under a rock, I'm pretty sure you, the listeners, you you've heard the story. But Nick Cannon has a um, podcast called yeah. Cannon Class. What's it called? Cannon's Class. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, on on an interview, he was talking about how black people are the original Jews. And he said that white people, um, the less melanin you have, the more evil you are. I'm not, I'm misquoting him, but that's essentially what he said, like how white people. You're paraphrasing. Yeah, basically you're barbaric if you don't have as much melanin. And um, Viacom caught wind of it. And Nick Cannon got fired. And Immediately, immediately too. Like, it was like no deliberation, like. Yeah, within it, like it was like in a. It was like that night. Span. Yeah, it was like that night they fired him. But uh, do y'all think that Nick Cannon did that on purpose? Because that that interview was two years old. He knows the climate, and he released it during a time like this. I don't know. I think that's difficult to say that he did. That I don't think he expected to get fired like off of that though. Yeah. 
I mean, anything you say about the Jewish community. My know. thing is this, is like, why, why would Nick Cannon release that after he just saw how much criticism that Deshaun Jackson from the Philadelphia Eagles just got? That's my yeah. point. Like, why? Like, I understand, like, all right. And Nick Cannon's a smart oh, dude. backtrack a little bit. So what Nick Cannon said wasn't – trying to be careful with my words. All right, now. Be <laughs> safe. You being safe. I am being safe. Yeah. I am being yeah. safe. I'm, I'm being super safe. Nah, I guess, nah, you, you, nah, you, you told me. Don't lie. No, I didn't tell you nothing. Before, before no, we start I, the I podcast. Don't wanna, I, don't offend, I don't want to offend anybody who's of Jewish, you know, the Jewish community or whatever the case may be. But what Nick Cannon said was spot on, and it, it was a, a lot of what how black people feel. I mean, a lot of African Americans feel that way um, in regards to, you know, the Jewish community. And, uh, well, not specifically just Jewish community, Caucasian, European community. Um, and every time it seems that every time somebody of African African American descent that have a, that has a platform and they choose to speak on you know social issues and things like that they get canceled immediately. Um, so now I'm starting to see you know some repetitive stuff that's going on, and now like I said, every time somebody says something they get canceled. So are they scared of the truth being out, or are they scared of the, the conversation that needs to be had with that community? See. Here's, here's my thing. And I'm not a black Israelite. I, I have a few friends that are, and they, they're very detailed in how they feel about, you know, the origins of Judaism in regards to the black community. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know. I don't. So I'm not, I'm not going to touch on that. But, you know, I will get educated on my friends that are black Israelites to see how they, how they, feel about that but my thing is i don't understand how that's and it is my ignorance so i don't understand how that's um anti-semitic to say that black people to say that you believe that black people are original jews i don't understand maybe maybe it is they said that the jewish people stole blacks identities and ran with it but even so like i'm muslim right and if a group of people say, oh, we're the, we're the original um, Muslims, I, that, that, I wouldn't get offended by that. Like, I think what, what they got, I think more so what they got offended by is him saying that the lighter your melanin is. But it didn't. I didn't hear no white, more, they said anti-Semitic. They didn't say anything about white people being barbarics, barbarians. He like, was like, I think he called them like savages or something. Yeah, for, he did. I forgot they, the they didn't get mad at that part. That part wasn't even addressed. That's all I'm like. That that was the offensive part to me. If I was a a, a white person, I heard someone saying that all of us are savages or whatever. And I, and back 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 to what we say about being able to articulate yourself. Like, I I, I thought Nick Cannon was, was a bright guy before this. I believe that he still is. I'm gonna shoot him some bill. I thought that was dumb, dog. Like he could. Everybody he, makes mistakes, though. Yeah. Yeah, but I understand that, but. He could have articulated that a lot better. Like you, you can of course had that stance as a black person and bring, up, that and bring up historical things that have transpired to support that argument. He just like <laughs> just shot that out there with nothing with nothing backing it. So of course you're gonna look absolutely nuts saying that. But if you're saying that black people have been castrated and black people have been um Black men, they, they take like the biggest black man on the plantation and rape him from everyone. Black slave women have been raped. Um, the Tuskegee experiment. Like you could point to all those historical factors and say, you know what? Based on this, I believe that a lot of white people are X, Y, Z. But he just <laughs> shot that out and there then, with no explanation. And, I was like, and what? then he just made a, you can't make a blanket statement saying, the lighter you are, the more evil you are. Thank like, you. That's just yeah, ignorant. I agree with that. I agree with that. Like, it's the, that's an easy argument to be, an easy discussion to be had. But he just made a blanket statement, and he looked nuts. But the thing is, nobody really addressed that part. They only addressed the, 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 the Jewish aspect of that conversation, from what I've seen, unless y'all saw something else. No, I mean, you're right. And I'm like, that's, that's, that's crazy. See, my biggest, my biggest issue with this is that every time an African-American or a black person comes out and says something, dog, they get ridiculed. 
And then when Nick Cannon, obviously his money is hurt, his business, his business has been impacted, and he goes out and he makes an apology, then the African-American community wants to go ahead and make fun of him now. They say, oh, now you're a sellout because you're apologizing. No, he's not a sellout. Yeah, people, people, Twitter was, black Twitter, they were crushing him. Like, they, were, they started crushing him after he apologized. They were saying, Nick Cannon, you can't go out and say all that stuff and then go on the next day and apologize. So, like, now, so then Nick Cannon had, had put, posted a tweet, and he was like, I say something for the black community. <clears throat> I say something defending the black community. And then, obviously, I lose, I lose everything. And then now I make an apology. And then now, now, all of a sudden, black people don't want to rock with me. He said, it's like, I can't win. And then he said, peace. Like, he put up the peace sign on his little Twitter joint. But Nick Cannon, he's been trying to piss off white people for the longest. Dude, but he's that's, waiting for Chess to get his shit off. Yeah, I mean, but that's frustrating. I can understand why Nick, is, why Nick is frustrated. But what I do commend, I do commend Diddy for going out and posting on his Twitter that he wants Wallen out to be put on um, revolt. He wants Nick Cannon to come to revolt, and he wants to hire Nick Cannon. He said he wants him to come to a black-owned business. So I'll that way he can still have the platform. So I do like that. So shout-out to Diddy for that. And that's a, that's a, that's a huge shout-out to Diddy for that. But I what I don't – Go ahead. But what I don't like is, so like, I'm gonna bring something up from the past. So like Riley Cooper, for instance, for, for those individuals who don't know who Riley Cooper is, he was a former wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. And he was at a concert saying the N-word to a security uh, officer and it went, the video went viral. Riley Cooper, had, all he did was make an apology and then afterwards ended up getting, I think, a four-year, $25 million extension from the Philadelphia Eagles after this situation had happened. I don't like that shit because if the Philadelphia Eagles are going to come out and they're going to make a statement, and I know this was off topic, but if the Philadelphia Eagles are going to come out and make a statement about Deshaun Jackson saying that they don't support his views, um, that, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles organization is against anti-Semitism and all that stuff, well, why didn't you make those same statements about that when Riley Cooper came out and made those statements calling those security guards an N-word? But then yet, you, the following year, you went on to give him a four-year, $25 million extension. I don't like that shit. So that's why I say every time that somebody of color has, has, a, has an opinion, and even though it may be drastic, even though they have an, every time they have an opinion, they get canceled. And I don't like that shit. They always, get, they always get held to a higher standard. Hold everybody to the same standard if you're going to do that. Even a president be saying wild shit. Wild exactly, I thought you know, just as wild as what Nick Cannon says. Exactly. So I mean, like I said, that, that's just my issue with the whole thing. Hey, Shout man. out to Nick Cannon. I hope, I hope you know the wilding out and everything. Viacom, all his businesses that he had. I hope that it, it comes back to, you know, to be profitable for him because, like I said, he's, just, he's just really deserving of it. So Judah got pissed off and, and left, dog. You no, know, you, you know your white boy, right? He got upset about his whole entire subject, dog. <laughs> The white man got upset, got, got upset, bro. <laughs> Damn it. Fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, you brought some valid points. But I, I think when it comes to the higher-ups, dog, like, I hate to say it, but if, if you're white, you're right. In a lot of people's eyes. So, I mean. And I don't want to go too, I don't want to go too much of, of, of in a tangent on, on this. How do you feel as a Dallas Cowboys fan, dog, that Jerry Jones has not stepped out and made a statement on Black Lives Matter? Um, very disappointed, but not shocked. Yeah, I'm like disappointed, but I mean, he's a, he's I, a billionaire white man. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's it's expected, but I'm disappointed in the in the in the fact that that majority of his players are black. Not just majority of his players, a majority of his star players are black. All yeah. the star players are black. Yeah. And you won't stand and unify with your players. Do I believe that Jerry Jones is racist? No, I don't think he's racist. But I definitely think that he knows what butters his pockets. He's all about money. And he knows what yeah. certain statements he'll make. He'll abandon a large sector of his American America's team fan base. But he's willing to abandon his black fan base. Like he's like a, a strong black and brown fan base so for me it's like yeah i still i still i still support the cowboys as far as like buying tickets to a game no me buying cowboys apparel no yeah so, i mean i'm 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 personally at, at a crossroads because my my moral compass and morals don't change with who i support you know 
it's difficult, but I have to be the same way across the board. Like if I'm canceling these companies that are Trump supporters, which Jerry Jones is, it kind of puts me in a position where I'm I'm kind of at a crossroads to where I might not be able to continue to support the Cowboys. And I never thought I'd say that, but it's get to the point where like my morals overrule like a game. I mean, but we we let me let's be honest. All thirty-two NFL owners probably support uh, Donald Trump. Let's just keep it a bean. Yes, I mean, they're all rich white men that make money and that want to continue to keep their money. So, but the thing is, like Trump was like, and that's that's the wild part about it because Trump was like not in the in group, like he yeah. always wanted to be an NFL owner, and they was yeah. like shitting on Trump, and to He's, see him being his president, and they're kissing his ass is like that's 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 mind boggling. Yeah, it's crazy. Cause like he was trying to get in the, the 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 club for a long time. It was like nah, nah, you good. Yeah, that was the reason why he he and some other business owners created the AFL. Yeah, and that shit fell through. So, but or was the USFL? I might you might be right. It might have been the USFL, some shit like that. It was AFL, USFL, something like that. I think it was XFL. Nah, XFL is uh. This man dog. <laughs> yeah. <this is. laughs> hey, speaking of that, uh, XFL, I like that joint. It was good. It was good, but. Is it done now that with COVID? Yeah, it went the uh, the the league went bankrupt. Damn, dog. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna end this podcast how we normally end this podcast with what y'all been on. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Drew start start us off first, dog. Go well, ahead, Uncle Goo. Uh, so what I've been on recently, um, not much. TV or, or movies, nothing like that. Like I said, I just haven't really been watching a lot of that lately. Um, but I did, I have been listening to a lot of music. A lot of new music came out. Um, of course, got to talk about the Drake tracks. He dropped uh, Grease, Pop Star, um, and he dropped a freestyle with Heady One, who's like a UK drill artist. So, like, three new Drake tracks, like, in the past few days dropped. Um, How do you feel about a UK joint, dog? I thought it was tough. I like that. I like that. I like when he switches it up like that. So that's just me. No, I you just love, no, I think you love Drake too much, dog. You can't never I, criticize him, dog. You can't. You don't never criticize Drake, dog. I do. You thought Grease was good too? Grease was okay. The voice like threw me off. Like the effect that they had on his voice like threw me off of it. But like after listening to it a lot more times, like I've gotten used to it. But. I, I can see why a lot of people be like, nah, because the he sounded like a mix between like the weekend, Nav, and Justin Bieber. Like the Nav? all combined. Yeah. It sounded it like it sounds like a Nav track. I thought it, it was like it could have been Nav, but like it's all them combined into one. So like it, it kind of threw me off, but it's this mad catchy, of course. But like it's, Popstar it's, was it's definitely it. it's a Popstar man. was definitely the best song. Like that's that joint is tough. What about the yeah. Popstar? What about the was it something freestyle? Yeah. That's the one with Heady One. What's yeah, that? What's the, that UK, the UK joint. The UK dude. Uh, what's the name of the song? Yeah, something freestyle. It's it's trash. I heard it. It yeah. might grow on me. Only so you like, freestyle. Only so you like? freestyle. Only you freestyle. Okay. Um, I thought that joint. I I like that joint. But yeah, Pop Star was definitely the best track out of that. Um, I feel like whenever he gets with like Khaled, like he just he, he's no he he's going for a hit. Like it's it's a. It's a plan in place. Like, he's not trying to do nothing crazy. He's going for a hit. So, I'm starting not to like DJ Khaled and, and Drake uh, collaborations, dog. I'm starting to like mean, him. I hate DJ Khaled, so, I mean, he's annoying. I, I don't mind DJ Khaled, but I feel like Drake changes – I feel like DJ Khaled tries to change Drake too much on the track. I don't like that shit. I'm, the pop no. store drunk was in his lane, though. Huh? The pop star joint was in his lane. Yeah, pop star was in his lane, but the grease joint was not in his lane. Well, yeah, but normally when Drake drops a two pack, one is a singing song and one's like a rapping song. Like that's normally how it does, how he goes. I so it. that wasn't surprising to me, but yeah, the voice did throw me off. Um, I also listened to the Janae Aiko um, Chalumbo Deluxe album. That joint was tough. Um, again, another person hopping on the Deluxe wave. Um, I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of it, but it is what it is. Um, also listened to the Pop Smoke Deluxe album, which dropped. That was like 15 tracks. So damn near a whole new album. Um, oh, 50 so new were, tracks. Yeah. So damn, I, didn't, I didn't even know that drop. Yeah, so I listened to that joint. Um, so there's some good tracks on there. I didn't I didn't like as many as I did off the main album. Probably only That's like 
I probably only liked about six out of the 15, six or seven, Leah. So I felt like a lot of them were like forced. Like we didn't need all of those extra tracks. That's I, wouldn't my- say, I wouldn't say it was forced. They probably, somebody probably put those tracks out. Cause uh, so apparently didn't they say on the Joe Budden podcast that uh, Pop Smoke has like a, a thousand unreleased songs or something like that? Some crazy amount. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like they could have, not all of them were worthy enough to be on the deluxe to me. Um, but my track for this week is, um, it's a, it's a DMV artist actually named 3 Black. Uh, he has a track with Moneybag Yo called Hole Up. Uh, I think it's produced by Take Keith. That joint is super hard. Um, I'm not sure what part of the DMV he's from, but that joint is tough. That's tough, dog. That's my song. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So what I've been on, dog, is um, so I had the opportunity to catch up on some movies. So I went and saw, well, watched from the crib, Harriet. Got to saw the Harriet Tubman movie. I actually like that joint. It's very informative. Um, obviously. Why'd you watch it? Kanye already said she didn't do nothing. What? So you had to go watch the movie? Before? I actually watched it before he even made the statement. That's why it kind of annoyed me when he made the statement. Um, but I saw Harriet, which is a really good movie, so I encourage you to go see it. Uh, if you have Cox, uh, cable, it's free. Um, <clears throat> and Jarvis is childish. Hey, um, and then I, went, I was on Netflix this weekend. And tama, tama, this tama, tama. He said if you have Cox, it's free. Hey, yo, watch him out. Go ahead, though. <laughs> um... So I went on Netflix and saw the movie, uh, The Old Guard. That joint was tough. A uh, pretty good movie, action movie. Um, so if you have the opportunity to check that out, check that out. I haven't seen Fatal Affair yet. I think that's what it's called with Omar Epps and Neil Long. Um, but that's probably next on the bucket list to go ahead and knock that off. Um, but as far as music, uh, the Janae Eichel joint, um, I definitely had an opportunity to listen to that joint. And it's, you know, pretty smooth. Um, but as far as my track of the week, um, I have a track. It's called Good and Plenty uh, with Alex Isley, Masigo, and Jack Dine. Uh, that joint is pretty tough. Uh, R&B joint. So uh, hopefully y'all get an opportunity to check that out. Hey, Alex Isley and Jack Dine, they be getting it in. Yeah. Hey, they, they, they undefeated right now, bro. Like, yeah. Every song is just fire. Um, but what I've been on, I did watch Fatal Affair. And granted, like the storyline has played out. Like we, We've seen this storyline – a million times, bro. Like, it's mad predictable. However, it, for me, it was good to see Nia Long and Omar Epps in a movie. Like, it, it's been a while. And, I mean, they both still look good, young. You know what I'm saying? They, they didn't age well. I mean, I they heard, didn't heard, age well. I heard, Omar, I heard Omar had the lazy eye, though. I heard he was in that jail like this. That's wrong, bro. That's what I heard, bro. I heard he was up in that jail like that, bro. That's wrong, dog. <laughs> but they, they, both, they both aged well. And Nia Long, she... She hasn't aged a bit, dog. Like, we was watching that. Like, me and my girls watching that. And we like, dang, like, her boobs, like, did she get a boob job? I don't remember. That's why, being- that's why J. Cole wanted to get at it. Probably. Yeah, so, you know, she looked marvelous. But the, the storylines played out. Marvelous? Um, whatever, y'all. So, I watched that. I finished Shameless. So, season 10 of Shameless. For the, for the listeners, because these guys are, are whack. They don't watch Shameless. So for the listeners that, you know, watch Shameless, like the 10th season was actually pretty good, bro. It was actually good without Fiona. So that's the win. I'm still watching The Shy. Um, the Shy, it, this this season is dope because it's tackling like a lot of issues that are being ignored. So Keisha, one of the main characters, um, she's gone um, missing. So she was kidnapped. And that's something that's going on in the black community where like there's a lot of missing black girls. So I, I think that's something that they tackled that will hopefully be an eye opener to like what's going on in our community. But I mean, it's been a good season. It's been good. I'm surprised neither of y'all talked about uh, what I talked about in the group chat for y'all today. I just dropped that gem for y'all. I was House just about to bring it up. What? House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, we ready. We ready. The prequel. Listen, just, just it, it's shutting everything down. All right. When that drops, for those of you that don't know, me and Jarvis are huge Game of Thrones fans. This nigga Jarrell. It's just weird. Can't get, can't get to middle, medieval times. I'm cool. You're crazy. You're crazy. Did you, did you even try to watch it ever? I think I watched the first episode maybe for like 45 minutes, and I was cool. I was cool. You're crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, one, one of the best, like, seasons, like, one through six is, like, some of the best 
television writing ever. Yeah. Too, yeah. too many storylines. is wonderful. But, yeah, they started the casting for it. Is better than power? All right, yo. End the podcast, though. <laughs> <Just> end <it. laughs> So the song that I'm doing this week, it's a it's an old joint, but it's new to me. It's um and maybe y'all heard it, but it's Be Your Girl by T J Moses and K Trinata. So I heard um, I heard of K Trinata. She's uh, done uh, some music with the internet. Ain't K Trinata a dude? No, I thought it was a girl. Oh, anyways. Well, it sounds like a girl to me. I could be misinformed. I think it's a guy, but we'll we'll, we'll check after the pod. But that song is dope. Like, be a girl. Like, it's one of those songs that if you're in a bad mood, you throw that joint on, you don't get immediately happy, dog. So, you can clean your crib to it. You can do whatever. So, shout out to Teacher Moses and K. Janata. But uh, whether you listen to us, if you're at work or you're off work, we appreciate it. And we out. All right. <laughs>